Hello again, this is Jack Sperner, the designer of Dungeons of Infinity, and today we are going to look at Dungeon Lord movement and the Dungeon Lord cards, or the Lord event cards as they are called. Dungeon is not set up, there's no, there's no uh, markers on it for debris, there's no markers for bodies or chests, I just want to lay out a dungeon so you could see how the Lord event cards work and how the Dungeon Lord moves. So we'll start out, and I'll show <clears throat> a Lord event card here. There are two parts to this. There's the top half <clears throat> and the bottom half. Excuse me. The top half has a number. The bottom half is the AI. So until the Dungeon Lord appears in the dungeon, you refer to the top half of the card. Now, when do you draw these cards? After you get rid of the threat meter, and the threat meter was decremented by discovering tiles, by starting combat, by running, and by certain abilities that heroes have. Let's look, this is uh, Indolf Arminger's hero board. Here is his Lord event action section. So whenever he is in combat, whenever he runs, and whenever he moves, you would draw a Lord event card. If he moved, three tiles, he did three move actions, but you only draw one if he moves. Doesn't matter how many tiles he moves. If he runs, it doesn't matter how many tiles he runs. If he's in combat, then you draw a card. So essentially, he could move three tiles and you would just draw one card. Every turn that he is in combat, he draws a Lord Event card, unless he is in combat with the Dungeon Lord, in which case you don't draw a card. If the Dungeon Lord is causing the combat to draw the card, then you don't draw the card. And here's the thief, Simon Aliros, and notice his Lord event section. He doesn't draw Lord event cards ever. That's not completely true. He has a couple abilities where he draws Lord event cards, but he can be in combat, doesn't draw cards. He can run, doesn't draw cards. He can move, doesn't draw cards. So he's very stealthy. For those of you who think, oh, I know what we'll do. We'll do a game with just heroes that have this wonderful nothing on their Lord event section. Well, the rules state that if you go one entire round and the Dungeon Lord is in the dungeon and you don't draw a Lord event card, <clears throat> you draw one and he moves three in that direction kind of motivation to uh, actually make a little noise. Now also, this is where noise is gonna come into effect. There, his noise is one. He is very stealthy. And Indolf's noise is four. And we'll see right now where that comes into effect. So right now in this dungeon, we have Simon here and we have Indolf there. So Indolf decides to move his turn. One, two, three. Three. So he has moved three, and notice here, here and here, you cannot cross over. There's no doorways here, and here there's one doorway and a wall. So to be able to go from tile to tile, you need two doorways. We draw a Lord event card, and we only care about the top part, and the top part is number three. So we draw a Lord event card because he ran. There's the card, and you see 18. So if you look through this dungeon, and not sure how well you can see from the distance, there is no tile 18 in this dungeon. So he would not, the dungeon lord would not appear. But let's, let's just assume for sake that you draw this card. It's a 22. The dungeon lord is right here in tile 22. He would show up in tile 22. So that's how the dungeon lord shows up. When the threat meter goes away, it's based on the actions on their hero card, and then you draw as many cards as based on actions that they took in their Lord event section. Let's look at the bottom section now. When you draw one, he moves one towards the hero with four noise. So in this case, if you drew that card, Indolf has a four noise, the Dungeon Lord would move one towards Indolf. Then the next one, you have moves one towards the highest noise. 
So that's not a specific hero no noise number, but in this case, Indolf, again, Indolf has the highest noise. You would move towards this one. Now here's another one. It says move one towards hero with one noise. In this case, that's Simon. So let's assume the dungeon lord was here and you drew this card and you move one towards a hero with one noise, he would move towards Simon. Now I'm also gonna point out the combat here. And I'll mention what that is. And here on this card, you notice there is no combat symbol. What this symbol essentially means is if the dungeon lord, say the dungeon lord is in this tile fighting Simon and you drew this card, if he was in combat, he does not move. But if you draw it and that symbol is not on the card, then he would disengage and move based on the directions of the card. So when you're in combat, you like to see these cards drawn. And then there is another event, which is called a rampage. Now a rampage, notice there's no combat here. So a rampage, he's going to disengage from the hero he is fighting, if he's fighting a hero. And then you roll a d20 and the little chart around here on a one through five, he goes north. Six through 10, he goes west, south, or east, south, and west, depending on what you roll. And he moves three. So he would move three, let's say he's moving south, one, two, he cannot go any further, he would stop there. If he was to go north, one, he actually could draw another tile and go north. And then notice there's no more, I don't think you can see that. So he goes as far as he can in the direction of that card. And the run rage, he disengages from everybody. Normally, let's put the heroes all here, and let's say he run rages north. Normally, when he moves into a dungeon tile, he immediately engages the hero one with the noise on the card he drew. So if Simon or Indolf and Simon were both here and we drew the card where it said moves one towards hero with one noise, he would move towards this tile and then he would immediately focus on Simon because Simon was the noise that he was focused towards. If it was the card that says noise of four, he would move up one and then focus immediately on Indolf because he had a noise of four. Now, what if it was a card that said, move one towards a noise of five? Well, the card also says, if they're not there, otherwise moves towards the highest noise. Well, in this case, there's no noise of five in the dungeon, so he would move one towards Indolf with noise of four, and he would immediately focus and attack Indolf. So these cards, there's 32 of them. Let's recap real quickly. You draw a card when he's not in the dungeon and you have done one of these. In fact, if, if Indolf was in combat, he ran and moved, he would draw three Dungeon Lord cards. When the number on the, t on the card matches a number in the dungeon, the Dungeon Lord appears there. Then from then on out, you look at the bottom part of the card to determine where, how the Dungeon Lord moves. And highest noise are gonna be where he moves the most. So that is how the Dungeon Lord appears in the dungeon, and that is how he moves throughout the dungeon. Thank you very much, and don't forget to like and to subscribe. And I believe our next video is going to be on combat, and that'll be a very interesting video. Thank you.